Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen and a warm welcome on behalf of Islamabad Medical College and our very own research and development department I am Sayyid Hasan Bukhari and co-hosting with me is Gulay Zahra It goes without saying that your presence here especially that of our esteemed guest of honor Dr Naila Siddiqui is a huge source of encouragement for us I must say that we're extremely honored to be addressing you at this prestigious moment when our institution concludes our second annual research conference. Dear audience, this ceremony underlines our achievements and success, but we being Muslims cannot give the entire credit to ourselves. Unlike this, we've rather been told to submit humble apologies to Almighty Allah for any blunders that we might have consciously or unconsciously committed during the process of achieving victory and that we should glorify our lord with his praise fa sabbih bi hamdi rabbika wa astaghfir innahu kana tawaba i would like to call upon hafiz mudassir imtiaz for the recitation of the holy quran a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim لِتَحْكُمَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِمَا أَرَاكَ اللَّهُ وَلَا تَكُن لِّلْخَائِنِينَ خَطِيمًا وَاسْتَغْفِرِ what majestic expression and now i request you all to please rise for the national anthem Without further ado, I'd like to invite Professor Dr. Khalid Hassan to come on stage and enlighten us with his views about this event. Professor Dr. Khalid Hassan is the serving principal and current head of department pathology here at IMDC and Akbar Niazi Teaching Hospital. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Respected guest of honor, Dr. Naila Siddiqui, General Mustafa Kamal Akbar Sahab. Respected Chairman IMDC, Dr. Ghulam Akbar Khan Niazi, MD, IMDC, uh, respected colleagues, respected researchers, guests, all the delegates, and the students. It is a profound privilege and honor for me to welcome you all on this day 
at the closing ceremony of the second annual research conference of IMDC. As I compare this conference with the last year, I'm really delighted that the level of research that is presented here is from all over, from around other cities, and the research level is much, much enhanced as compared to our previous endeavors. This research forum, led by Dr. Professor Iram Hadi, is doing a very marvelous job. They're running a journal of IMDC, <coughs> which is recognized by PMDC and HIC alike, and attracting research papers from all over the country and occasionally from abroad as well. It is progressively uh, increasing its standards under the capable guidance of Professor Naila Iram Hadi and her team. I thank her and her uh, other partners who organized this conference under the able guidance of our uh, chairman and the dean, as well as a very dynamic managing director of ours. I have gone through various papers that have been presented. I was judge of one of the sessions as well. I want to give a suggestion to the researchers. I would rather like that the papers they present may be focused on our problems, our national problems, like diabetes mellitus, hypertension, heart diseases, chronic hepatitis, and sequelae cancers that are evolving. And the research would be more meaningful. And you should come with original ideas instead of uh, just confirming previous findings, which is generally done. Though there are few papers which have been based on uh, this area as well, original research, I mean basic research, but most of the papers are verification of already existing data. Let's come out of it. Let's organize our research fora in our college and other sister institutions as well. I really commend RMU from this respect. They are doing that job. The VC, Dr. Omar, has really organized the research forum, which happily I was a partner starting way back with him when I was in IMDC. We are doing similar exercise here, and we are coming up with uh, better and better and more uh, research work in this uh, institution as well. It is high time that we should get the research component included in the curriculum of MBBS students. It is already a part of curriculum of postgraduate though, but undergraduate level pay bhi is tarah ki koi segment It can be started with understanding of research, what it is, how to make a, an article, how to uh, statistics analyze, how to go for medical writing in different years. If we make it a part of curriculum, I think the research will infuse into ourselves. And it is a very powerful segment of medical fraternity if it is adopted. I really thank all of you, particularly the guests who have come from other uh, institutions, from Peshawar and uh, other institutions in the uh, city. And I, I believe that this research and this uh, conference will boost up our endeavors in the service of mankind and the patient. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a soft announcement from the media group uh, that all of this is going live right now at the uh, Islamabad Medical Dental College Facebook page. So those of you who want to share these moments with your loved ones, etc., you can just give them a link from our Facebook page. Okay. Uh, next, we'd like to call our esteemed guest of honor, Dr. Naila Siddiqui Kamal. Dr. Naila is a fellow of United Kingdom's Royal College of Ops and Gyne. She holds an advanced degree in medical education from the Imperial College of London and is certified in patient safety, quality, informatics, and leadership from Harvard University. She currently holds inventor status at the Imperial College London. Please give a huge round of applause for Dr. Naila Siddiqui Kamal.
Honor of me. Thank you, first of all, um, for inviting me. It's a great honor. It's always a great pleasure to be in Pakistan, and especially in my humble way, um, share some of my experiences and uh, talk about a very passionate subject of mine, which is patient safety. So, um, as you have uh, been given a very kind introduction to myself, um, I'm involved in medical education for the past 20 years in a formal way with Imperial College. Um, and have had some experience as well from Harvard. Uh, with regards to that, I'd like to share some, a few points which I think will be very relevant and um, will hope to shape the uh, future trajectory uh, from the point of view of Pakistan and its um, medical educational needs. So what is happening right now is that we are in our fourth industrial revolution. And I would say almost at the end of our fourth re industrial revolution and entering um, uh, uh, an era where, where uh, technology is playing a big part in every aspect of our lives. And that is relevant to how we educate our uh, future generations uh, in medical education, as well as how we treat patients. So the way um, historically, you know, patients were treated <clears throat> in the last few decades is seeing a change. Now, what's so different about it? I mean, we've seen change over the years always. The way, um, uh, you know, patients were examined um, with which tools, you know, with technology, you've got ultrasound, you've got MRIs, you've got CTs. Uh, before, there was just X-ray, and even before that, there was just the clinical skills. I would say I'm a great advocate of maintaining your clinical skills because we are clinicians at the bottom of it. So the importance of uh, technology is such that now we hear artificial intelligence, robotics, uh, disruptive technologies, um, you know, taking over a lot of uh, things that were done traditionally differently. So by disruptive technologies, the word disruptive often means, you know, gives a negative view, but disruption means things that we used to do, uh, when they get totally changed by other ways of doing things, then that is a disruption. So in healthcare, we are facing uh, an era where there is disruption. For example, I mean, this example I gave in the workshop that I did yesterday as well, that there used to be the old gramophone, I remember in my grandmother's house, and there was that black record players, I don't know what it is called. Then we had the, C um, the cassette recorders, then the um, CD players, and then iPhones and iPods and God knows what, right? So the newer um, version or newer, newer way of do, you know, doing things was taking, totally took over and made the previous one redundant. So that is a, a disruptive technology, right? Sustainable technology is that something, for example, your iPhone, iPhone 4, 5, 6, and now we've got the iPhone 11. So something which is already there and the technology is improving on itself. So the four most important technologies that are impacting healthcare right now are um, artificial intelligence, you have internet of things, we have robotics, which is machine learning, and there is blockchain. Now, I wouldn't go in too much detail, but it's important because the venue here today is talking about research and uh, the theme is around the sustainable development goal number three, um, wellness, health and wellness. So I have been very impressed by the, you know, the work that has been show, showcased outside and some of the studies I would like to applaud the team that you know, your research methodology are really um, next to none and they are up to the standards that would, I would expect at Imperial College. So, that is something that I'm really very um, impressed, and it's something to celebrate. At the same time, 
Um, I would like to encourage you all, and especially the people who are, I'm actually talking to the people right at the back. In my opinion, they should be in the front. Anyway, that's my point of view. But uh, the medical students who are the future generation and the future doctors, I'm addressing you, my friends, that the way you will be seeing patients may be totally different, especially if you are looking forward to going abroad to, to um, you know, get skilled and hopefully come back. And you know, bring those skills to the people that really need it. You need to know how to um, prepare yourself to pass those exams. These are not just academic exams, it's the way things are being done now. You will be um, seeing patients who have had artificial intelligence being used to make um, diagnosis to tell you exactly which pathway the patient should be put on. Robotics, such as the Da Vinci robotics uh, surgical um, automation, which will be, you know, the patient needs to be prepared for that. So I would suggest and recommend that the curriculum needs to be reviewed. And I, uh, Imperial College has gone through a curriculum review where I played, I think, a significant role in impressing them that we need to have learning objectives in the syllabus and in the curriculum which include these emerging technologies. And what the emerging technologies which are here right now may not be the same in a few years. So what we need to prepare our, our students for is the change management. How do they equip themselves to undergo this change? I'd like to quote a study here. It was done at Harvard that the amount of medical knowledge in order for it to double in 1950 was 50 years. In 1980, the amount of knowledge, medical knowledge, for it to double, it was thought it would be seven years. And the amount of knowledge in 2010 to double, it was thought that it would be um, around three years. It's predicted in 2020, the amount of time that it will need to double that amount of knowledge will be 73 days. So in 73 days, what we know now, we'll have to know double the amount. So it is not humanly possible to have that much of information. So educationists are in medical education are really looking at the things that we need to focus on, what is relevant, and take out the stuff that is not really relevant. For example, when I sat my exams, the examiners would try to tease out the most remotest of anatomical existence, you know, the function or the presence of, or the um, anatomy of maybe the pineal gland or something like that. I mean, it would make someone feel very good that, okay, the student has, knows that bit of information, but tell me, in real life, in your practical in, you know, experience, how many patients are going, you are going to see for, you know, with that remotest of anatomical existence? So it's very hard because we are traditionalists to take out or to change things that we have been traditionally doing, but we really need to take, think out of the box now. We need to see what is relevant for our students to know in our context and also in the wider international um, context where they are going to be going out or match, even if they are not going out, they need to match their competencies. So that when you present your papers on international conferences, they can say that yes, it meets the, you know, the international standards and it is not something that needs further work. So I would plea to all the educationists who are sitting in the front rows that please review the curriculum and see what is the most relevant. And I, important thing is obviously a regulatory body which should take this initiative. But uh, since I've landed in the 48 hours what I've heard, there are challenges there as well. But let's hope you are the future and I'm a very optimistic person. So that uh, in my last few sentences, I would like to share something educational apart from 
what we are talking today. Tell me, what are the three most important skills to be a good doctor? It is number one, situation awareness, right? And it's a skill. It, it, it actually can be translated in everything we do in life. So unless you are fully aware of the situation, whether you are at bedside, whether you are here, whether you are planning your careers, your lives, situation awareness is very important, okay? It has a lot of things, okay, what, uh, what is happening right now and what are the surroundings? And the key to it is, why is this situation here? What has happened before? And the most important is projection. That means what can happen from here onwards, right? A good doctor will always know what, this current situation and what can it lead to so that you can preempt. So in wellness and in um, you know, health, we are very reactive. When things have gone wrong, that's when we come into action. If you are situation aware, you will know, you will predict what can happen. And the timeline of wellness and illness is like this. It's skewed. Illness is more, wellness is less. We should aim that the wellness becomes more and the illness becomes less. So number one is situation awareness. Number two, critical thinking. You need to, I, I think like a digital robot. So all the information is in my mind like entry points. And I need to make sure that based on the situation, my entry points are aligned so that my thinking is very logical, evidence-based. You can apply it to a clinical situation. I'm a gynecologist by background. Woman comes in with um, abdominal, lower abdominal pain, with amenorrhea of eight weeks, with bleeding. I should be, situation, my situation awareness should alert me. Is there a possibility of pregnancy, and if it is possible, or it is pre uh, you know, pregnancy, is there a possibility of an ectopic? So my alignment, and this is what machine learning is. Experts have put in their algorithms in the machines, and the machine picks up what is the most likely event. So number one was situation awareness, number two was critical thinking, and number three is timely decision making. If you come to a point that, okay, this patient has got sepsis, but you, decide, you know, come to that conclusion five days later, the ship has sailed. Yes? So timely decision making. And these three skills are what I would like you to implement in anything that you're doing within your curriculum, within your you know, clinical teaching. And when you're an expert in it, you will see that life is also like that. But that's a little bit of my philosophical tips that I'm giving. Uh, once again, I thank you all. It's been a great pleasure and very humble that I'm given this uh, invitation by Sir. And um, um, in my capacity, all of you are more than welcome to reach out to me uh, for any advice, faculty or students. Thank you so much. Uh, and now, I would like to call the Managing Director, IMDC, and Akbar Niazi Teaching Hospital, Mr. Yasir Khan Niazi. Sir, please. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulil Kareem. Um, first of all, I would like to congratulate Dr. Naila Hadi and her team for a successful event. I think um, as we progress, and this is our second we can see that there is an exceptional change and improvement from where we were and where we are. I would like to congratulate the students and those who have present, done oral uh, presentations. I haven't been able to attend many of them, but I saw the poster um, uh, presentations, and I have to say that in, they were of the quality, uh, and you saw the attestation coming from the, an expert on those, and I would like to congratulate the students for their hard work and, um, and, and, and the output which has come in. Um, at IMDC, I think the dean will follow and he will have to say that I don't want to preempt most of his speech. But the thing is, our commitment uh, to research, our commitment 
to technology, our, te uh, our commitment to advancement and having critical thinking. It's, it's, it's very much evident. And we will keep on investing into that critical thinking and in, in analytical development of analytical skills. Because yes, we agree with you, that's the future. And that's where we have to go. Um, uh, and, uh, and we will keep on working towards it. Uh, and we will put in whatever resources are required. And, and that's a commitment which we are willing to make, and it is. Um, once again, I would like to thank the team and the students and the participants for their hard work, and congratulations to all. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have a rundown of yesterday's events. Here are some short clips from the four workshops that were held yesterday. Uh, now, I would like to call the Honorable Dean Health Sciences, Professor Dr. Sayed Shweb Hassan Shah. He holds a degree in medical jurisprudence and is serving diplomat of the American Board. Uh, sir, please, for your token of thanks. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi Shirah Li Sadri, Yasir Li Amri, Walu Lukdat of Middlesani, Yafkohu Kali. So allow me to just go through very briefly about our second international, I will say it's international conference. And the theme of that conf conference was very well chosen. That was health and wellness for all ages. I would take uh, a little time to just start with how we started our research and development department. It was year 2018, early 2018. I was just looking for a person. And we had so many able persons from our own faculty, but they were very engaged in their responsibilities. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with Dr. Naila Iram Hadi. And she came in March 2018. And we started our research and development department in 2018. And after a few months, we, we held our first annual research day. And after a year, we are sitting over here very satisfied and I am really proud that we are holding second annual research conference. Now this is a conference and we have invited our guest from Imperial College of London. So you know that was a little brief, you can just guess the journey from that first annual research day to this conference. It has hardly taken us a year to, to just uh, organize such a big conference. So it, it was basically organized for two days. The first day was reserved for pre-conference workshops. As you have seen, there were five workshops and very important one. The first was on patient safety. 
that was uh, facilitated by uh, Do uh, Dr. Naila Siddiqui. The second was psychiatry for non-psychiatrists was facilitated by the legend uh, uh, psychiatrist of this area, uh, Dr. Fareed Minhas. The third workshop was about uh, SPSS, and that was uh, facilitated by Dr. Farah and Dr. Abdullah. Then there was another very important workshop, HIV. On HIV, that was facilitated by our very senior professor, Dr. Rizwan. And fifth workshop was organized by our College of Dentistry at Islamabad Dental Hospital that was on dental implants. It was all a hands-on workshop, right started at 9 o'clock and ended in the afternoon. So you can just guess the magnitude of that day, that how important workshops were organized by Islamabad Medical and Dental College and Research and Development Section. Today, we had poster presentations, and I have counted about 84 posters were presented on different topics. They were classified under different topics, and uh, some of the judges have given me their, uh, uh, you can say, view about those uh, posters. They were excellent. And then we have oral presentations, and after oral uh, presentations, we are here for the closing ceremony. Let me give you a round of some of the activities which our research and development uh, department is pursuing. You see, uh, the moment it started, R&D, we just thought it has to be off the level of an oryx. So, but what we lack over here is a little bit commercialization of all the projects or our future projects. So, we started with a website exclusive for research and development section. Then we have a very robust and standard IRB review process. And uh, their proposals and guidelines have been streamlined. First annual research day and second inter uh, international conference, I have already told you. Research projects with a span of one year, there have been 76 research projects which have been completed, and another 60 projects are under process. So it's almost 130 research projects which this department has completed in a year. And uh, by the grace of Almighty Allah, Islamabad, is, Islamabad Medical and Dental College is registered as an organization with clinicaltrial.gov. is a registry of clinical trials and is the largest clinical trials database which is run by National Library of Medicine under NIH, Washington, D.C. So about publications, Islamabad Medical and Dental College has its own uh, journal, JIMDC. And with a span of year, it is an old journal, but now it is an open access journal. And we have started a double blind review process for this journal. And uh, we have started uh, giving remuneration to the, uh, our reviewers as per the guidelines of Higher Education Commission. So it is recognized by Pakistan Medical and Dental Council and Higher Education Commission. <coughs> so it is indexed in different uh, indexation agencies WHO Index Medicus. It is uh, also indexed in Base Germany. NetMedics, which is Cambridge International 
academics uk crossref it, it is basically an official digital object identifier it's an agency which basically identifies and classifies international research projects asian digital library and park medinet is the largest medical database of pakistani medical journals so alhamdulillah we are progressing we are on the right path and uh, with all the cooperation facilitation of our management as mr yasir niazi has said that there is all the budget and everything is available for good research and holding a uh, national or international good conferences i am really thankful on behalf of my research and development section that our management is standing behind us and specially i would like to thank few people all the team of research and development section organizers and uh, i would uh, also like to thank our co partners uh, city2 and their team as well as many other unsung heroes of this conference so i would just uh, take a leave from now uh, and with the dua that uh, from now onwards inshallah uh, we will progress further and we will not disappoint our management inshallah thank you very much and now for his lifelong ever efforts and an array of credentials the man himself the man behind it all dr gulam akbar khan niazi chairman imdc and akbar niazi teaching hospital i call upon the revered chairman to come up on stage and share his views about the conference alhamdulillah <laughs> rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salamu ala akhir anbiya wal mahal khatam al mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain main aane se ab tak soch raha tha ke is conference mein practically agar dekha jaye to jiska sabse kam dakhal directly hai wo डॉक्टर अकबर न्याजी खुद है लेकिन सही बात यह है कि मेरे सामने एक दो मेहमान बैठे हैं सिर्फ बाकी मेरे साथी हैं हम जानते हैं एक दूसरे को हमें आलिम है आई एम लकी इसमें कि मुझे बहुत अच्छे साथी मिले हैं बहुत अच्छे कुलीग मिले हैं हर ब्रांच में क्लिनिकल साइड पे भी बेसिक साइड पे भी और ये 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 जो इदारा आगे बढ़ता जा रहा है अलहमदिल्ला इस वक्त इसके सामने कोई ऐसी डिफ़िकल्टी नहीं है इसकी वजह ये यही हजरात है यही मेरी टीम है और मैं इन सब का शुक्र गुज़ार हूँ उससे भी ज़्यादा जैसे वो तो मैं डॉक्टर सदीकी साहब वही कह रही थी कि सही ये है कि वही यार लकी कि हमें जो स्टूडेंट्स मिले हैं वो भी बहुत अच्छे मिले हैं उसमें सब के सिलेक्शन में तो हमारा हिस्सा नहीं है इधर उधर की हम में करना पड़ता है लेकिन मोस्टली हमारे स्टूडेंट्स हर लिहाज से एजुकेशनली भी और अखलाक के लिहाज से भी मैं समझता हूँ कि दे हैव स्टैंडर्ड एंड दे आई अप्रिशिएट देम और उनका मैं शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ और असल में ये सब चीज़ें जो हम कर रहे हैं ये उन्हीं के लिए हैं क्योंकि दे आर आवर फ्यूचर मैं इस मौके पे एक दो नाम लूँगा ये मेहमानों का बाकी सब मेरे साथ ही हैं इसमें एक तो लेजेंड बैठे हुए हैं हमारे दरमियान जनरल कमाल अकबर खान जी जनरल कमाल साहब ज़रा उठिए 
ये इन्होंने सब जो मेडिकल थ्योरीज थी वो वो गलत साबित कर दी हैं जनाब कितनी दफा ब्लड दे चुके हैं डॉक्टर हाँ हाँ जी हंड्रेड फिफ्टी थ्री इस उम्र में भी और अब भी ये अगर ज़रूरत पड़े तो इसी वक्त देते हैं तो ये हैं वो लोग जो मिसाली तौर पर हमारे सामने हैं प्रकृति जी थैंक यू वेरी मच करना था मेरे दूसरे नौजवान मेहमान हैं मैं मेरे पीर हैं वैसे तो पीर मेरे मेरे पीर के भी पीर हैं वो है ख्वाजा शिराज साहब वो यार रखी कि ये किसी और काम से भी आ गए लेकिन उनको हमने पकड़ लिया और वो है तो ये खाल मैं उनका भी शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ तो बात ये है ये रिसर्च एक तो सर्च होती है ना मालूम है कि हम सब सर्च करते हैं मुख्तलि चीज़ें तो लेकिन रिसर्च ये है कि आप लगे रहें उस वक्त तक कोशिश करते रहें जब तक कि आप कोई और वो उससे जो मौजूद चीज़ें हैं उनसे ज़्यादा मुफीद चीज़ कोई दरियाफत कर लें ये है रिसर्च तो इसमें इन हम भी लगे हुए हैं और मैं हमें उम्मीद मुझे उम्मीद है कि इन शीएमडीसी या इस्लामाबाद मेडिकल कॉलेज और इलाइट जो उसके कॉलेजेस हैं वो भी ऐसी चीज़ भी निकाल लेंगे जिस पर हम फख्र कर सकते तो आखिर मैं ये कहता हूँ कि आप सब लोगों का बहुत शुक्रिया वो मुझे अलामा इकबाल का शेर याद आ रहा है कि तू ही नादा चंद कलियों पर किनात कर गया तू ही नादा चंद कलियों पर किनात कर गया वरना गुलशन में इलाज तंगी दामा भी था तो हम अपनी सर्च और रिसर्च के जरिए जारी रखेंगे कि हमें अच्छे से अच्छे लोग मिले वेल्थ या रिसोर्स का भी दखल होता है लेकिन असल चीज़ होता है वो इंसान है मैन बिहाइंड द गन मैटर्स तो इन हम इस कोशिश को भी जारी रखेंगे मैं एक दफ़ा फिर अपने मेहमानों का अपने पुलिस का अपने स्टूडेंट्स का और इस सारी एफर्ट्स में हिस्सा लेने वाले सब साथियों का बहुत बहुत शुक्रगुजार हूँ इन हम इसमें आगे बढ़ते रहेंगे Thank you very much.